Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and today I'll be doing yet another 4K Blu-ray review roundup of four titles. And those movies are Challengers, Twister, Godzilla, X-Kong, The New Empire, and Abigail. But before we begin today's episode, you can listen to our podcast on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to our show, we would love to hear from you guys. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. Or you can email us at filmoptics at gmail.com for any movie-related question. So before we dive into today's episode, I want to start out with a couple disclaimers for you guys. Firstly, I would like to extend my gratitude to Warner Brothers and to Universal Pictures for providing these titles that we'll be discussing today. And secondly, I want to set expectations for our discussion with four movies on the docket today. I'm not going to be able to dive into each title as deeply as I would like to when it comes to the tech specs. So instead, I will be sharing my thoughts on each title and helping you decide whether or not they're worth adding to your Blu-ray collection. So let's kick off things with challengers. So we actually covered this film on the podcast, and I will link our in-depth review to challengers in the description below, as well as our other movies that we are discussing here today. But this film is starring Zendaya, Josh O'Connor, and Mike Faist, and it's directed by Luca Guadagnino. And when I watched this for a second time on my couch for the Blu-ray release. I felt the same way as I did during our review, but I got a different perspective on what the entire movie was about. This is a film that requires multiple watches because the story is told through three people's points of view. And I joked about this movie, putting it on my letterbox, saying that it's the equivalent to the two guys, one racket type of situation. And coming off of Luca's previous film, or his most notable previous film, Call Me By Your Name, this is right up his alleyway. This film is a crazy experience for this girl who is played by Zendaya. I believe her name is Tashi. And she is obsessed with tennis, like 1,000%. And you're, you're able to see how she's able to play the game of tennis without actually playing the game because her herself used to be a tennis player. But there is a lot of nonlinear storytelling here. And that's what I adore most about this movie is that we get little pockets in time that we're jumping back and forth between and honestly when when it comes to the special features and the audio and video you know this this movie originally is I'm kind of disappointed that we're only getting a blu-ray release I wish we would have seen this in 4k because I think this is a beautifully shot film the editing is phenomenal and it's funny because I'm going through like the letterbox comments um, as I was preparing for this review And someone by the name of Brian uh, stated that for challengers, everything is sex except sex, which is tennis. And I think that is a perfect way to describe this movie. There's love. There's portrayal. It is a sports movie all in all. I, I feel like I've been to Wimbledon and back by watching this movie. I've never watched a tennis game a day in my life, but... I imagine this is an average day for uh, Wii Sports players out there. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, but it's it's a fantastic, colorful film that it's about, my gosh, like the friendship that happens between Josh O'Connor and Mike Feast's characters. I think they're easily the strongest bunches of this film, but it was also nice to see 
Zendaya take on a more adult role for this movie. And I hope that happens with her career moving forward because she's usually in most movies that she's in, she's usually stuck playing the younger character or like the coming of age character. I and mean, she has a baby face and you know, you can't really fault her for that. But I'm excited that she was in this film, that she's able to take on more of these adult roles. So, like I said, two guys, one racket. It's it's a great movie. And there's there will always be a memory of a specific scene in this film. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, of course. If you haven't seen it, you haven't seen it. But there's a specific frame in this film. If I ever play tennis... If I ever play pickleball, I will start off with my serve with that exact frame. And the great thing about this movie is that since it's only a Blu-ray release, you also get that digital code as well. It's only going to run you around $22 according to Amazon, Target, Walmart, Best Buy, you name it. So it's, it's a great movie for a very, very cheap deal. And I think that's what I appreciate about it the most is that you can actually find this in stores today as of July 14th, 2024. So great price, great movie. I would definitely recommend adding this to your collection, especially if you're a Zendaya fan or a tennis fan. So on to what is perhaps my favorite film of the bunch that I am reviewing today is the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray release of Twister. And if you live in the Midwest, if you live in the Midwest, you know exactly what this movie is. It is a staple for every Midwestern home in the United States because boy, oh boy, do we love us some tornadoes this is a film that i highly recommend that people pick up i'm just going to say that right off the bat you can find this on amazon and walmart for 24.96 that is a hell of a deal when it comes to a 4k blu-ray release you get the 4k disc and the digital code sadly no blu-ray release here but my gosh, I actually watched this movie earlier in the year because I knew that Twisters, the new the sequel coming out for this movie, is right on the horizon, coming out honestly within the next month, I believe, as of this recording. And I forgot how good that, that movie was because I hadn't seen it in a while. And then I rewatched it again in the 4K format and I got to tell you, the, the Dolby Atmos here is just fantastic. And it's one of those movies where, again, Warner Brothers does a phenomenal job of taking their legacy titles, their older titles, and converting them into 4K. I don't know what's in the water over there. They got the magic sauce. The, the imaging here, the cinematography is, of course, always, it's the same movie. It's, it's fantastic. But it's definitely worth after, you know, within, oh my gosh, 20 years this film has been out, it feels like. I, I'm i so excited that this movie coming to the 4K format is something we exactly needed. Because I'm not entirely sure if you guys know, Twister was the first movie to ever hit the DVD format, which... I think it's a great movie to hit that format and it's coming back. It was released on Blu-ray and now it's here on 4k. The audio here is fantastic. I will say the special features are so, so they're not terrible. There's a few audio, uh, audio commentaries here. There's a legacy of twister taken by when featurette, which is around 15 minutes. And there's a chasing the storm, a twister revisited, Featurette as well as a few other things um, as a the making of Twister, which I don't think we get a lot of that when it comes to uh, new releases. Obviously, this is an older film, but it's still a great film and everyone should see it. I'm so excited that the summer classic disaster epic it has finally hit the 4k market i've been waiting for this for a very long time you know you get helen hunt you get bill paxton you get yourself some philip seymour hoffman a very young 
Philip Seymour Hoffman, by the way. But this is a movie that everyone, and I mean everyone, should own. If you have a 4K player, if you have a PlayStation 5, if you have an Xbox Series S or X, if you have any 4K Blu-ray at all, if, if you have a 4K disc built into your PC, I know that's probably not as likely, you should be buying this movie because it is just that good. I've always joked that it is that it is the original Fast and Furious because it still holds up. I love this movie. And you should definitely add this film to your collection. Again, this film is only $24.96. You can find it on Amazon. Find it on Walmart.com, Target, Best Buy, you name it. It's, it's a great deal for a 4K digital code and the 4K disc itself. Again, a little bummed that it doesn't come with a Blu-ray disc, but it just seems that Warner Brothers and other studios are kind of cutting down the costs that way to where it's like, hey, we're going to give you the 4K disc, we're going to give you the digital code, but it's almost like if you're buying the 4K, are you really going to use the Blu-ray copy unless you want to give that to a friend, which in that case, I totally understand. I've done that before, but... As I said, for the first time in 4K, you should be buying this movie 1,000%. And up next on our list, this is probably my least favorite of the bunch because as much as I love Godzilla and King Kong, Godzilla x King Kong, The New Empire was more of a King Kong story than a Godzilla story. And I think that's fine, but I feel like if you're going to have both kaiju monsters in one film, I feel like they should get around the same screen time. Um, I can't remember the exact amounts, but I know that King Kong screen time in this film was marginally greater than Godzilla, and the big bad of this film really focuses around Hollow Earth, which is like a its own mini earth within the core of our earth where King Kong is from and he's trying to find his family. And I, I got to say though, I will say since this is a review of the disc itself, we also covered this. I will link a description to the show notes below for this film. I got to say when it comes to the audio and visual quality of this movie, it is phenomenal. And this is, wasn't even my favorite Godzilla movie of this past year. That crown actually goes to Godzilla Minus One, which I'm still waiting on a Blu-ray release. I know it's on Netflix. I know the black and white version is on Netflix. And I know it's out in Japan um, on Blu-ray, but I, I'm going to need a... <laughs> I'm going to need a U.S. release or just a a general release of that movie, but I digress. When it comes to Godzilla X Kong, there is a lot to like here. When it comes to the, I guess you can say the Warner Brothers Godzilla movies, nine times out of 10, the human stories always suck. But this time around, they weren't as bad because this does follow off the heels of Godzilla versus Kong. So it's about Godzilla and King Kong trying to live in the same world in a cohesive manner, but things kind of go awry with um, King Kong's lineage and the other apes that are about. But it is a movie where, of course, the kaiju monsters are always going to be more interesting than the human characters. And this time around... I cared a little bit more about the human characters because, again, this is more of a direct sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong. And it's a great time. There's a few weird shoddy CGI moments in here, but I can't help but root for King Kong when it comes to a lot of things. And I think that this movie has made him even more likable than before. And it is a great blockbuster film. I believe this is also coming to uh, Max, formerly known as HBO Max, at some point in the future. 
For this movie, though, I would say if you're not like a big King Kong or Godzilla fan, I wouldn't say this is a must have movie in your collection because this seems like one of those like big summer blockbusters that everyone goes to see. And then only the hardcore fans of those franchise will go out and buy this movie on Blu-ray or 4K. So it's more of a matter of how big of a Godzilla fan are you? And I will say compared to the previous two movies that we just covered for Challengers and for Twister, Godzilla X Kong, the new empire runs you around $29.95 and you're only getting a 4K Ultra HD disc and a digital code. So for the previous two, they were around 22 to 24. This is gradually moving up the scale to around basically a $30 price point. Do I think this is worth adding to your collection? Probably not. Again, like I said, you have to be a hardcore fan of these characters or of this franchise in order to add this to your collection. I don't see a standard person just saying, hey, let me add this. I enjoy this in theaters. You might be that person, but from my perspective and from my Blu-ray collecting experience, usually I am very picky with what Blu-rays I buy. Or if you're thinking about picking this up on Blu-ray, I would perhaps watch it on Max first to see if this is something that you would rewatch again or something that you want to add to your collection because for effectively $30... It's it's a pretty big ask for what they're offering. Obviously, there is like the HDR10. You know, you have Dolby Vision support. It is in 4K. The audio and video are very crisp. I I was very shocked of uh, the audio and video quality when it came to this film. Honestly, on a ranking scale, I would give it five out of five. Like especially the Dolby Atmos um, scale for the audio uh, specifically. But when it comes to the special features, I feel like they're kind of lackluster because the 4K version comes with the same set of supplements that the Blu-ray counterpart comes with. So you're not getting anything extra. You're really just paying for that higher quality of resolution, of audio, so it's kind of disappointing because you can't buy this movie on standard Blu-ray that comes with the digital code. And this is the 4K review. So it's it's the same features that the Blu-ray comes with. And that's a little disappointing and to me. Like there's a few uh, six to 12 minute featurettes here and there. So it's like... Is that really worth it? I feel like they could have given you a little bit more, especially for a price point at $30. But it is the latest Godzilla and King Kong film out there. And no doubt they will be releasing more. But I will say, if you are interested in this franchise or want to get into this franchise, I would definitely recommend watching Monarch on Apple TV Plus, and that kind of feeds in to the films. You don't have to watch it. It's just more of an added bonus if you watch that TV series before watching this movie, which I feel like most people won't. Again, if you're a huge Godzilla or a Kaiju fan, you probably will. But definitely for this one, I would say I'm actually on the fence. I, would, I don't know if I recommend this to just anyone looking to pick this up unless I knew they were a big Godzilla or King Kong fan. And the fourth and final movie, I, I believe we're probably saving one of the best for last because I know I already talked about Twister. But this movie, when, when it comes to original horror films, oh my gosh, Abigail is the place to be. This film is directed by Radio Silence, who has directed the previous two Scream films, with that being Scream 5, which is actually titled just Scream, and then Scream 6. So this film is fantastic. I will say that when it comes to original horror, I am so happy that we got a Blu-ray release of this. 
Um, the tagline of this film is children can be such monsters, which is very true in more ways than one. But this is a collector's edition. At least that's what it says on the box. Blu-ray plus DVD plus a digital code, which is crazy to think about because like I mentioned in my previous three movies that we just covered here for their Blu-ray releases, you're usually only getting one or the other when it comes to a Blu-ray disc or a 4K Blu-ray disc. And with this, you're getting three copies in one package. And this film will cost you dipping right back down. We went from we went from $22 for Challengers, $24 for Twister, and then $29 for Godzilla X Kong. Now we're dipping back down into the $22.96 price range for Abigail. Again, you've got a Blu-ray, DVD, and a digital copy, which is a sweet spot for a movie like this because it is a movie that is horror, but I feel like even non-horror fans will appreciate this. I've always liked to think of Radio Silence, which, by the way, comprises of three people being named Tyler Gillett, Guy Busick, and Matt Bettinelli Oplin. So those are the three people that consist of Radio Silence. So it is three directors as a team. I, I feel like they are introductory horror almost in a way. It's not anything demonic or anything like that. As I mentioned, they reignited the Scream franchise with the previous two Scream films, and they also directed Ready or Not, which is actually my first introduction to Radio Silence as well. So it's it's crazy because like a film that's like from dusk till dawn, it's kind of like that or Until Dawn, the video game. It, it has that premise where, you know, there is this girl ballerina who happens to be a vampire. And I don't want to give anything away because that's something that I actually give away in the trailer, which I don't really consider a spoiler. But th this film is just so much fun. The writing is on point. You have fantastic cast here with Catherine Newton being one of the main stars as well as Melissa Barrera, who also starred in those previous two screen films that I mentioned earlier that Radio Silence directed. And my gosh, like it's, we can sit here and talk about the audio and the video quality. It's going to be your standard Blu-ray. Like if I'm giving the video and audio quality, like a quick review, I would say it's a four out of five for both because the audio is going to be that standard Dolby um, true HD 7.1 audio track and the standard Blu-ray 1080p transfer looks great. But I will say a little bit on the technical side, I did find out that this movie was actually shot in 4K, but there's no release for a 4K version of this movie at the moment. And I feel like that's, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because if they're transferring a 4K video quality and downgrading it or transferring it from 4K to 1080p, which is essentially downgrading it to fit into a Blu-ray, it can only mean that the 4K version will maybe possibly release at some point. And I know a lot of films that Universal does this specifically. They've also done this with Violent Nights, the uh, Santa slash Home Alone slash Die Hard movie that David Harbour was a part of. And that was also released by Universal where a Blu-ray release came out first. And then I believe it was no less than a year later, a 4K version of that movie also released. So it's a bit backwards. I don't know why Universal does that. I've not reached out to them for comments, but... Overall, this is a great movie. Everyone should watch it because if you're a horror fan, if you like vampires, if you like Catherine Newton or Melissa Barrera, you should watch this. You should buy this. This should be a part of your collection, especially if you are a big horror fan. Again, at $22.96, you can find this over on Amazon, Walmart, Target, Best Buy. 
you name it. It's just one of those films where I was blown away and I was looking forward to it, especially after the unfortunate news that Radio Silence had bowed out from the Scream 7 project that's happening over at Paramount because I was really looking forward to that. But I love these directors. I will support them in any way that I can. And you should definitely pick this up to add to your Blu-ray collection. And that concludes today's episode of yet another Blu-ray review roundup. If you enjoy what you heard, make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your preferred podcast platform of choice. And make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, threads, at Film Optics. Again, that's Optics with an X. And don't forget to share an episode of our podcast with a fellow movie lover out there, whether it be your mother, your brother, or your significant other. Spread the love for the Film Optics podcast with the movie lover and need. And again, thank you so much to Wonder Brothers and to Universal for sending these review copies over to me so that I can give you guys the tea on whether or not these are worth picking up. And I hope you do pick up some of these titles because there's a lot of great ones in there. But thank you all for listening. If you enjoy the show, please take a moment to leave us a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That does help us out with placements on those respective platforms. And make sure to stay connected with us by following us on Twitter, Instagram, and threads for the latest updates. My name is Christian, and I'm signing off. And remember, life is like a movie. So go out there and make it a blockbuster.